Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurship Facts. Today, I have another special guest for all of you. His name is Stan Wei. And this guy, he was in a corporate 9 to 5 for a Fortune 100, right? And he quit. Now, he go to the online world, build. A, well, he had a lot of failure. Now, his business making multiple six figures, probably going to hit a million dollars in revenue this year. So, I let him introduce himself to all of you. Stan, why don't you tell my audience a bit about yourself? Sure. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I, I'm honored to be here, David. Uh, I appreciate it so much and excited for your audience. Like it, you, you obviously are speaking to really cool people. So anyone who's listening, um, like, look, you know, I'm I'm the classic entrepreneur in a lot of ways, but I'm different in a lot of ways too. Um, you know, I, I did, like you said, you know, I've been a corporate sales trainer, recruiter, uh, director of marketing for Fortune 100 companies. Um, my son, who, as we record this, he's five years old. So a little over five years ago, he was born. He came a month early. There were a few complications. Um, I had, while I had this amazing like six-figure year job, I also launched like a six-figure year agency on the side. And it was so funny because of my false beliefs around like what I should have and who I should be for other people. Um, I, you know, I, I stepped away from that position um, with a Fortune 100 company. And what happened was because I didn't have, you know, the job and what everyone else thought I should have, I went into like a severe depression. I actually ended up like losing my business and my clients and everything. And I went through like this transformation of like literally li at the time, um, my former wife and I with our brand new baby, um, we moved into my mother-in-law's house with a brand new baby, like, you know, and, you know, went through extreme failure, but, you know, then have rebuilt and kind of found the systems, the frameworks and processes to create that business. So yeah, I'm excited to be here, excited to share literally anything I can to help your audience. That's awesome. All right, so what, what was the, the thing that made you quit your nine to five and then go into the entrepreneurial route and then go online? What, what motivates you to do that? Uh, yeah, so I mean, for me, it's really personal. Um, I have a five-year-old little boy, I have a three-year-old little girl, um, I'm, I'm one of these guys, it was kind of weird. So I, I dropped out of college, mm -hmm. uh, literally three weeks into college. Uh, I, it was the middle of a, a math lecture. Um, and the professor was up there talking about math and I looked around and like, I'll never forget. There was this girl with like her just mouth open and she looked so bored and like a zombie and she was over here on my right. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I looked around some more. I was like, oh my God, everyone just looks so like they hate their life. And I was like, oh my God, I hate being here. I can't take it. I had like, like a mini panic attack. And I got up, I grabbed my textbook and my notes and everything. And I went to the front of the class and I said, I'm sorry, I've got to go. And the professor looked at me and she was like, okay, well, we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you on Thursday, Mr. Way. And I was like, no, I've got to go. I set down that $300 math textbook, you know, on her desk. And I left, I walked out of college and, uh, you know, everyone thought I was crazy. Um, I don't, I have no problem with higher education, but I, I walked away from that and I got into sales. Um, and you know, it, it's one of those scenarios where over the last few years as my life has kind of developed and everything, what, what made me leave corporate America was the fact that like, I loved my, my positions in corporate America, but I always knew there was more. And I knew, always knew there was serving at another level, which I think most entrepreneurs, most people start their businesses because they have a product or a service that they're passionate about that they think can make the world a better place. Um, and, and so, you know, I felt that. I knew what that was like, but I had to overcome, like, my friends having negative beliefs, my, my family having negative beliefs, and, and kind of struggling through that. But, but that, was the, that was what made me leave it, essentially, is because I wanted more. And, and the big tipping point was when my son was born. He, he came a month early. Um, he went into the NICU, um, was fine, but you know, some complications and everything from coming early. And it was funny because he was born on a Sunday after 47 hours of labor. My, my former wife was in labor for 47 hours. Um, Sunday, like one o'clock, he's finally born. Sunday evening, I get this call from my boss and my boss says, oh my gosh, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you can be here for, for the thing tomorrow, right? I was like, no, I can't. And, uh, and that, you know, I, I had an agency on the side that was doing six figures, like projected to do six figures at the time. So I was like, okay, let's do it. But once I lost that corporate job, you know, like so many entrepreneurs and so many people, I tied my self-worth into my job. Um, and because I did that, even though I was being successful in my, in my side hustle, but my super successful side hustle, even though I did that, I tied my self-worth to that job and I ended up going into this severe funk. So, so that's the transition. That's how it happened. Um, and it's just been a fun ride ever since. 
That's awesome. So what are some of the struggles, the challenges that you faced when you first started? Because I'm sort of sipped. The transition wasn't easy. It's not going to be a smooth transition, right? So sure, you faced a lot of failures. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the challenges that you faced? I, I think that the biggest challenge I face personally, and I honestly believe this for most entrepreneurs, is the biggest challenge is just not knowing how not knowing how and not having the frameworks and for some people like you know I, it, like some people come up with a physical product um and i say this you know i work in the digital uh, space um have clients in the digital space uh, all around so like people come up with a physical product and it's like you know, the best product in the world but they don't know how you know um so you got to find someone like you know one of one of my clients um, his, he, he, someone on his team was actually in charge of product development for General Electric for over 20 years. Like if you want someone to source a product in China and do so with the, is quality and at an affordable rate, like, cool. I, I know this guy I can introduce you. Like, uh, you know, uh, other people struggle with like, I know the how, but I don't know how to overcome the mental stuff. And so for me, it was just the knowledge and it took a long time. I mean, for a decade while I was still in corporate America, I remember in 2005 getting scammed repeatedly online. I paid for every PDF, ebook, junk course, everything while I had my corporate job because I was like, people are making money online. I just don't know how. And I kept getting screwed and scammed like so many other entrepreneurs. Um, and it took a while. I mean, it took me until about five years ago, literally a decade worth of like getting scammed and losing tens of thousands of dollars of money to being like, oh, okay, this is how real people with integrity build a business and finding coach and mentors and knowledge to actually build the business. So I think most people listening, it's knowledge and figuring out where to find the knowledge and not getting screwed, especially because like, as we're recording this, like everyone online, like some people are like, ah, oh, great. And I can help you, but yeah, they're kind of a shyster, you know? So yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree because when I first started with online marketing, because well, I, I went through the traditional education route as well. I finished school with marketing entrepreneurship degrees th two-ish, three years ago. And well, I didn't feel like I was ready, even though I have an entrepreneurship degree. I didn't feel like I'm ready to start a business on my own. Well, like most kids my age would do, I go on Google, search how to start a business online, and tons of results come up. I just overwhelmed. I don't even know which one to pursue. There's a free marketing, drop shipping, Amazon FBA, and all kind of different business. And there's all kind of gurus that taking pictures in front of their double guinea and you know, hey, I make million of dollars. Look at me, pay me like a few thousand dollars to learn from me. But then I'm like, well, if they're making that much money, why would they spend time promoting all these stuff and then teaching people these? Sure. If like it's for extra cash, but the way they do it is kind of give me a, a sense of okay, why do you really have to do? I don't know. It's giving me a bad sense that they're not really gurus. So I, I agree with you. There are a lot of scam out there that try to get people money, and it's hard for newbies who don't know what they're doing to figure okay, what's who's the real gurus and who's the who are the fake one, right? Yeah. No, you're you're so right. And like, so one of the things I've always said over the last few years is like i'm not going to work with fake internet gurus um and because i got screwed for so long i can kind of like i got like a spidey sense like oh no you're definitely <laughs> fake yeah so my first thing like anytime i take on a client i'm like well do you have social proof like what have you actually done um and most people are like man and like testimonials can be made up a lot of the time and everything um and so you know i've really prided my business and what i do like you know from an agency and coaching and uh consulting perspective like i don't work with fakes um, but I say that like one of one of my clients right now, we're helping him develop his high ticket coaching program. This is a guy that does tens of millions of dollars in sales. He's brilliant. He's probably one of the most brilliant marketers I've ever met. He's 26 years old, really super cool guy, business partner with him now, love him to death. Um, and he's, I, I love working with him because he's not doing the coaching or the course or what he's doing for money. It's literally because he loves teaching. He's found his calling teaching. And he does it like, I, oh my gosh, I'm like, your coaching should be $10,000. I've worked with other people. Your coaching should be $10,000. And he's like, yeah. meh, $2,000. I'm like, you're insane. You're absolutely insane. And like, he has students who are going like from, you know, that are doing like drop shipping and stuff. And then he teaches them a legitimate way. No, nothing against drop shipping, but like a legitimate way to have an online, you know, e-commerce business. And like, they're going like to $70,000 in revenue um within like 30 45 days like time and time and time again um, but he doesn't raise his prices and, it, and and i share that because like 
there are other people charging 10 times what he's charging for a hundred times less. And that's where as an entrepreneur, or anyone listening to this, you've got to be super, super, like you've got to have a spidey sense. You know, anyone who's like, buy now or you're going to miss out forever. No, you're not. No, there will always be another time. Like just research, research, research and find someone who can help you. Yeah. Well, I know you're a sales expert and a lot of, I guess, fake gurus out there, they're pretty good at selling. So what, what is the, I guess, what is the selling process for somebody who want to learn to sell online? What was, what is the basic sale process to convert cold traffic into a buyer? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I love that because sales, sales and marketing go hand in hand. Sales and marketing are like a marriage and you can't have a sell without good marketing. Um, and so this is where, you know, like you're talking about cold traffic, well, cold traffic, where's, where's the cold traffic coming from? You know, I've, I've got a client, um, he runs, runs a lot of Pinterest ads. Cool. Um, most people aren't on Pinterest. It's a little bit complicated, but the return on ad spend, return on ad spend in 2019 for Pinterest is like what it used to be on Facebook three or four years ago. Wow, really? Like it's crazy. It's crazy insane. It's super fun. Like, and that there's a secret for everyone, like by all means. Um, and who's teaching Pinterest? Mostly fakes. Uh, regrettably, but, but I, I share that like sales and marketing go hand in hand. So if you want to be good at sales, you also, in today's day and age, you have to be good at marketing and depending on where you're at in your business as an entrepreneur, um, you're going to have to wear multiple hats mm -hmm. and, and that's hard. You have to be a good marketer and you have to be a good salesperson. I tell everyone I work with, like the, the best thing you could do is become a good copywriter, like buy a couple of books on Amazon, get good at copywriting, like hook story offer. Like what's the hook? Um, and I, I tell everyone that because if you can get good at copywriting, awesome, you'll be good at marketing and you're also going to be really awesome at sales. Um, it, it, and that's like, that's a really wide general prescription. Mm -hmm. Um, but sales and marketing go together nowadays. And so I, I tell everyone like, you gotta be a good copywriter. Okay. So what's the process then when somebody, let's say you type out a sales letter, what is there a format on how, what go first, what goes second, what's, what's the process to turn that readers into a buyer yeah so this is i'll go back to uh gary ben savinja and i always mispronounce his name it must be you're, even you you're like what the heck was that name uh but it, like you can google him gary ben savinja and i always mispronounce it um, one of the greatest copy now saying <laughs> one of the greatest copywriters of all time you can i think he, I, I might be wrong i think he's passed away if he's not well great i'm glad you're still alive gary but you can go google him he has an old website he doesn't even have anything for sale but he has these copyright copywriting marketing bullets. And there's, you know, there's like two, three dozen bullets there. I think anyone could go access this free resource and start copywriting today. Um, his, his bullet number 23, I think is one of the most important bullets for anyone doing sales or marketing um, because he gives an equation in that bullet that everyone in sales and marketing should know. And the equation is this, it's I, like the letter I mm -hmm. equals B plus C. And, and what that stands for, I equals B plus C, is interest equals the benefit to the potential client plus the curiosity. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're writing any copy, any sales letter, any video letter, any webinar, or anytime you get on a sales call, you're not going to create interest unless you start out with the benefit, mm -hmm. but also create curiosity. Right. And the best way to create curiosity is to hint towards your social proof if you have social proof. And if you don't have social proof, like you don't have case studies or results or your product sucks and no one's ever left you a great review on Amazon, wherever you're at, get, give it away for free, get the social proof because then you can create the equation I equals B plus C. Sounds good. That's great. All right. And marketing, how, how is marketing different than sales? You mentioned that sales and marketing come hand in hand, right? So what are the differences? I, a lot of people, they, they confuse it. Okay, they sound very similar, but are they the same thing? Uh, they're they're very different, you know. And marketing marketing can be sales, and and, and but sales can never really be marketing, um, you know. And and I say that because like marketing is like like look at every sale that will ever come into your business. Mm -hmm. Um, it it's it, it's got to start with some sort of marketing. Yeah. Um, never are you going to walk up to some stranger and be like, Hey, here's your thing. And, it, and they're going to buy from me. And I give this example, my, my neighbors, um, here in my neighborhood, they had a yard sale the other day. Um, really nice stuff, like really legit, super nice stuff. Yeah. And the kids, you know, my neighbor has these little kids. I actually, 
they're kind of annoying, but um, the kids are out front and they're like, I walk out front and he's like, Hey man, come buy some stuff. And I was like, <laughs> what? The, the, you know, interest equals B plus C. There was no benefit to me and there was zero curiosity, you know? And so it's kind of funny. Like I, I walked over and I was like, Hey man. And I know this kid, like he's kind of annoying to me. And I was like, dude, if you, if you actually want to sell something, like you've got to, you've got to like hook people in. And he's, you know, he's like eight years old and he's like, what do you mean hook people in? I'm like, well, it, we're in it really like, it's like 1950s Americana where I live, like people walking up and down the street with ice cream cones. And so like, I was like, the next person that walks by, you need to be like, Hey, have you ever wanted one of these for half the price? And so like, I give this sales lesson to like this little boy yeah. and it's so funny I take my kids somewhere and I came back a couple hours later and I hear him holler to this lady walking by in her Lululemon working out yeah. <laughs> and he's like hey do your kids want to uh what do you say he said do your kids want this playhouse half price today ma'am <laughs> and she stopped and walked over and like I was like, oh my goodness. And she's like, can I Venmo you to this eight-year-old? And I was like, what am I living in? Like, I just taught an eight-year-old. But it was the marketing. He had to start off at the top with getting the attention. Yeah. And the sale happened because she wanted it, but he had to interest her and give her a benefit and curiosity first. All right. So if I were to sum it up, marketing would, would be to get somebody attention. And then the sales would be to break down any objection give out the benefits and details about whatever that you're offering. Right. So this hundred percent, hundred percent, such a good summation. Yeah, definitely. Sounds great. Okay. And what would you say is the one, do you think that marketing and sales is the key to any business? Cause I heard that saying a lot of people, even Mark Cuban say sales cure all for a business. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, I, well, you know, I've been online long enough. I think you've been online long enough to realize that there are crappy products and services that sell millions of dollars worth of crappy products and services. And it's because the people are good at marketing. Um, I've worked, you know, my goal is always to seek out and find clients and individuals who have the best, but they're bad at marketing and then help them with that that you know to step into that greatness and so once again that's why so many people get screwed online um because <laughs> they're crappy products and services but they're great at marketing so like yeah. it, it's one of those things like if you can get if you can get good at marketing you own the keys to the kingdom you own the keys to the kingdom the trick is you know as we record this november 2019 marketing is always changing like i, I see a lot of people going to TikTok right now um, I, I see a lot of people that I know have been spending millions of dollars on ad spend on Facebook every month. Mm -hmm. I've seen them start doing more ad roll and even Reddit ads. Um, like I, I am a student of marketing and it's funny because as the Facebook algorithm continues to change and become more difficult and like ban accounts for like zero reason whatsoever. It's funny watching where the market goes. So you have to, if you want to have a business you have to be a good marketer or you have to hire a good marketer but if you're gonna market yourself you have to have a student mentality because if you're not a student you will fail 100 percent. all right so it sounds like you're a big believer in personal development right do you think that's how important is personal development for an entrepreneur it, it, it's absolutely foundational um you know, I'll, I'll give the example. I, you know, and I told you right before we started recording, I just got off a coaching call with this whole group of students, a little over a dozen students who entered uh, a program that I have. And the foundational thing, the first modules on, in, in the training program, I think they were all kind of shocked because it's on mindset and how to develop their mindset. And I told them, I was like, you are going to fail in the next 10 weeks if you do not get the mindset portion right. Um, and they were, I think they're all kind of shocked because I've worked with a lot of people before. So I know how underwhelming it is to get in and be like, I'm going to change my life and get into a student portal and be like, Oh, it's mindset. What? But we got on the coaching call this morning and like, we really talked about it. And like, we're going to have another call here in two days, our next coaching call um, where I know from experience, because I've coached so many um, individuals and high performers, like I, and I warned them, I was like, you know, you should probably bring tissues. We're going to cry on this call because we're going to be working on your personal development. We're going to be working on your mindset. Um, it's absolutely foundational. And so, yeah, anyone listening, like you've got to, it, it's hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard. You have to be a great marketer. You have to be good at sales, but you also have to be good at protecting your mindset. And I think most people, the problem is, is they start off and they want to be an entrepreneur, but they get distracted because there are so many things to tear down their mindset. I mean, you, I mean, how do you protect your mindset? I like, I always love to hear how other entrepreneurs protect their okay. mindset. Uh, 
Well, if you, I'm sure you already know me. I have an Instagram page called Entrepreneurship Facts with well over a million followers. And yeah. that's exactly how I protect my mindset because the content I post on that page all about mindset, motivational, aspiration. And that's really the reason why, one of the biggest reasons why I started that page because it's for myself to post daily motivation to remind myself, okay, I need to have my mindset right, set my goal straight. So that's my Instagram page, literally my daily motivation. Whenever I make a post about something, I have to think up, okay, what do I need? And use a lot of the time, the daily motivational post and the content that I post is pretty much relevant to what I'm thinking in my head. So that's how I get keep my mindset straight. Love it. Yeah. Oh, that that's so good. So like, and I think everyone can learn from you. Like you were like, oh, here's something I need. This is a little bit of a weakness. How can I overcome this weakness? And so you made yourself super accountable. Like I, that's that's the best thing. And you like well, the great set thing. up a system. Yeah, the great thing I was able to turn it into a business at the same time. I get paid to keep myself motivated, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> I love that. That is so freaking awesome. Yeah, it, it, and more more people could learn from that. You know, you have to like not everyone's going to be able to create like a motivational Instagram account, like especially now. I mean, unless they learn from you because you're the master. But <laughs> but truly, like it's the fact that you created a process to keep your mindset up. And I think that's what's so important. That's everyone I work with, like a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh, well, I've done this and I did meditation and I took this program and everything else. And I'm like, look, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't care what your personal beliefs are. I don't care if you're a spiritual person or religious person, an atheist, like I don't care. I'm gonna give you a framework and there's different mindset routines that's gonna work according to your certain beliefs. Mm -hmm. I, I just approach it, you know, from a scientific perspective, like I coach and teach mindset a lot. It's the foundation of everything. All of my high-end coaching programs, it at the end of the day, I can teach you how to have a successful business. At the end of the day, you have to be good at mindset. And so my, most of my coaching, I never say I'm a mindset coach because I would never say that. But most of my coaching ends up being mindset uh, long term. Okay. So what's your routine for your daily mindset kind of routine yeah so for me it's it, it's a handful of things um it's you know first thing in the morning like in bed like i got up this morning i woke up without an alarm which is always my goal um i felt refreshed i felt great and i do not reach for my phone i don't look at my phone because my phone and those notifications the email inbox and whatever is going on on instagram and twitter and facebook and all those things that's other people's agenda for my day that's what other people are trying to get me to do or look at. Now, I will schedule and I'll block time to look at those things. Understand, like, oh, you know, it's, it's been about two hours since I've looked at Facebook. When I go back because of what I do for business, I'll probably have about 80 notifications there, mm -hmm. honestly. Like, it's a little bit overwhelming. But I have to schedule block those things. And it's the same with email and everything else. We, so the biggest thing for my mindset and the first thing anyone listening can implement instantly Turn off the notifications. Stop looking at your phone. If you have an iPhone, you get that thing once a week. It's like your screen time was up 13% last week. You're up to six hours, 30 minutes a day. And it's like, oh my God, why are you staring at your phone for six hours, 13 minutes? Like stop, get off the fucking phone and like go do something with your life. Um, for me, even though everything I do is based on the internet and technology, and yesterday I'm changing C name records on a domain name to point to a different target host for my training portals, and I uploaded videos on Vimeo and YouTube, and I, you know I've got a podcast intro. I just got the email. I saw it right down below here on my phone. Like I just got my podcast intro back for the podcast I'm launching. Like my whole life is digital, but I'm also like when I go out with people, I don't pick, take out my phone. And in, when I'm in bed in the morning, I focus and I, you know, I think of what I want to accomplish that day. I look at, and I look at all the challenges I might have, like what will challenge me today? And I think what would the best version of staying away do in the face of that challenge? And then like, you know, I do, I face those challenges and I always try to be the best version, work from a core of integrity, be kind, understanding, empathetic. And so I think that's the first thing though, you got to get rid of the distractions. Most people, most people are glued to this and that's their biggest downfall. The phone and the notifications and getting into that will make you fail. Okay. But I guess, all right, that, that makes sense. But if somebody who cannot kind of stay away from their phone, they work with their phone and is a must for their business, will you recommend the same thing? Oh, the phone is a must for my business. Mm -hmm. Understand, like when I'm on my phone, it's for work. It's oh. not for play, you know? Yes. I, I have, a, you know, I, 
me, me and my, my former wife, whom I love and adore, she lives literally 90 seconds down the street. We split our children 50, 50. We have a super weird, crazy, fun 21st century family. Um, but when my kids are with me, the nights my kids are with me, people know you're not going to get in touch with Stan Way between 5 PM and probably eight or 9 PM. My time. Yeah. It's just not going to happen unless there has been, unless someone's been murdered or a nuclear bomb has gone off. I'm not paying attention to it, I see. but, but you know, in the middle of the day, as I'm working, it's all like, I'm, I'm on there. I'm making videos continually. Like I, I do a lot. I teach a lot with video mm -hmm. in regards to both marketing yeah. um, on Facebook and like sales and everything. But also I ignore the notifications that are stupid. Like, Oh, John commented on your post in this super big Facebook group. Okay. Well, cool. I, I posted in that group to give content value inspiration. Yeah. I do what John says doesn't matter. I don't need to check those 30 comments as they come in. I'll yeah. catch them in a couple of days. No, that's, that's some very helpful tips right there. I'm sure a lot of people can definitely learn from that. All right. So let's see you're an expert in sales and marketing as well. For an entrepreneur who's struggling with getting their product or service out there to more people, what would you recommend them to do? What's the key thing that they need to do? Oh man, you, you, it, this goes back to what I said. You got to like go to copywriting. I know that seems silly, okay. but everyone right now, everyone has more tools with it going back to how this is a tool. Um, you know, as I hold up my phone here, you know, you have the most powerful marketing platforms in your hand that have ever existed in the history of man. Yes. If you can't afford to do like paid ads or paid marketing, cool. That's fine. You right now today can go set up a medium account and start writing and publishing. Yeah. You can create a blog. You can create a podcast, which costs almost nothing nowadays. You, you can create a YouTube channel and you can speak to your audience and, and you're going to suck at first. You're not going to sound great. Uh, you don't have case studies. You don't have social proof. You're not making money. But I, I guarantee, and I tell all my clients this, like, and you've heard this because the communities that we're in together, David, if you just publish, whether it's writing or video or whatever it is, if you just publish, people will come. I, you know, I'll give an example, super personal example. I held a launch last week for a, a, a coaching, the coaching program that I just got off the coaching call with. Um, I, I had a launch last week and literally I didn't Facebook pixel that page. I didn't set up a funnel. I literally just wrote Facebook posts, told people what was happening and people went and watched the page. Okay. It was literally, it, it, the page was so simple. It was a 27 minute video of me on one side yeah. and a checkout cart on the other side for a $797 coaching program. Yeah. Um, you know, all because I just wrote things online. I didn't pay on ads. I, did, I, I even forgot, like I had a couple of Facebook posts that I'd written out that I even forgot to publish about it. Mm -hmm. People all, like I shut down access to that course on Friday. People went crazy, like absolutely lost their minds. I have a, a good, I thought was a good friend. He unfriended me on Facebook because I wouldn't let him into my program after the cart closed. And I was like, dude, I'm sorry. Like I'm going to hold to the integrity of, I said, I'm only, you know, in this time frame. Um, but that's because I published, I publish, I publish. So anyone who's trying to bring their product or service to market, yep. publish. If your product or service is good, yep. you'll get the social proof. People, people will leave you testimonials. And once you've got social proof and testimonials, cool, it's game on like Donkey Kong. Other people will want it if you learn how to present it in the right way. That's a great tip right there. I totally agree. Content marketing is huge. And I think that's the trend going from now on for any company or any type of business nowadays, you have to be just a media company first. You have to create content around your product or service and then whatever products that you're selling after, right? So content marketing, I think that's huge. And yeah, that breath back to the point where you say, you'd be stuck at first, totally agree a hundred percent on that. Cause no, everybody have to start from zero, right? Cause a lot of people, they would come up with excuse like, okay, but my content sucks. I'm not comfortable in front of camera. I cannot write. I cannot talk to be on podcast. Well, just like anybody, any experts out there who, who seem to be like born with the skill, but no, they're not. They start with zero. When I start with my Instagram page, I suck at create, creating content. Like for the first couple of months, I barely got any followers, but the more I keep doing it, the, the less suck I become. And eventually I just realized, okay, I'm not that bad because people start following me now. So just one little tip for everybody who's listening. Well, just get started, right? 
oh my gosh, I want you to make a t-shirt. If you don't make the t-shirt, I want to make it for you. What you just said is so key. You said, the more I kept doing it, the less suck I become. I think that's like the most beautiful sentence I've ever heard. It's so true. Like if you just do it, it becomes easier. And, it, and as you post about your product or service, like, look, the people will find you. You know, we're in a market where if you have a good product or service, people will find you, but people aren't going to find you unless you're vocal about it at all. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Well, we are pretty much at the half an hour mark of my typical video. So is there any last word you want to tell my audience? Or if my audience want to find out more about you, where can they find out? Yeah. So it's pretty easy to find me. Uh, I, you can follow me on Instagram, which I, I love Instagram because you can see what a weird, what a weirdo I am. And if you still like me after seeing, you know, my animal impersonations with my kids, yep. like you can find me on Instagram. It's at, or it's at I am Stan Way. That's Stan Way, W-A-Y. Um, if you're looking to build, grow, and scale a digital marketing agency, I've worked with hundreds of digital marketing agencies over the last few years, helped them go from zero to multiple six figures in revenue everything from sales and marketing and everything else as a freelancer marketer or agency owner um you can go to agencygrowthlabs.com um we, we do, depending on when you listen to this it may be open or it may not be open um super excited for that program and uh yeah and, and then if you want someone to actually do marketing for you cool peak sales um we are a digital marketing agency we we help scale businesses uh as quickly as we can so yeah those are the places all right, sounds good. Thank you so much for your time, Stan. I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy, so you taking out the time here to spend with us today, that's really amazing. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. All right, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right, that's it.